It is Friday and yet another FNA Friday for your ear holes and today we're going to talk about the 7 essential tips when shooting reference. First off, I have to preface that this is about human reference. There's a whole lot of thing about looking for reference when it comes to creatures and animals and the science behind it and the intentions behind it. So today we're going to cover mostly human reference. So why would you film reference? You might be good enough to not shoot reference, do thumbnails, make it up in your head, go straight for the animation. That's totally fine. But a lot of times reference is super helpful when it comes to looking at body mechanics and how things move and just figuring out the complications of a shot. But as a whole, it's great for exploration. You want to get all of your crappy ideas out of your system. You want to start acting things out and just get everything out, all the cliches, all the bad acting, and just kind of start to experiment. You might come up with better ideas once you animate and you might be okay and fast enough to implement those ideas right away. But with shooting reference, again, you can improvise, you can explore, and you can kind of look at how does your body move. But let's get to the seven tips. Tip number one, if you can't act it out yourself, find an actor, meaning you're only as good as your reference. So if you have a hard time acting things out because of the space, because of other limitations, or you don't feel like you're not a good actor, you're too shy, then you have to find someone else. Find an animation buddy, find someone in your class or a friend and ask that person to act things out. Maybe you are better at directing. Tip number two, when you shoot reference, Make sure that everything you set up, your clothes, your room, your camera, whatever you have, is going to match your final shot as closely as possible. So in detail, if you have your character sitting down, then you sit down. If your character sits down at a table, then you should have a table in your room. If your character talks to someone that is taller than you, take some tape, rip it up, put two marks for eyeballs somewhere higher so that your character looks and acts like this. If you have a giant, you're not gonna talk down to the giant. So make sure that you have a mark on the wall and it could be even two to mimic eyeballs. So you can look left and right, left and right and have something to talk to. If your character has long hair, maybe you find a wig. If the hair is falling down, you have to constantly adjust the hair or do something with it. It just gets you more into character because you look like and act like your character. If you wanna go crazy, you can find some clothes that have maybe some lines here or whatever on your hips or shoulders or whatever you have so that when you do things like this and you move around that you actually have the lines that you can reference. That's a bit hardcore, but why not? This could also help you. Make sure that if your timeline in Maya, if you animate in Maya, is set to 24 frames a second, then shoot reference in 24 frames a second. Make sure that your room that you're shooting in has enough lights. You don't want to shoot reference and at the end you look at it it's like I can't tell what's going on or you have a dark background and your clothing is all dark and then you can't tell what's going on. The silhouette is all crappy. So make sure that everything is set up and lit the way that you can look at it and actually get information from it. Tip number three, don't pretend if you can help it. Meaning that if it's something heavy, then you're going to lift something heavy. If you're just pretending to lift something, it's going to do something like that. It's kind of useless. You're shooting reference so you can study the reference. You can see what your body is moving and how it behaves when you, for instance, lift something heavy. Same goes if you have audio, if you have lip sync and your character says something loud, then you're not gonna shoot reference like this. Well, actually you could. I mean, if it's someone in danger, you want to happy, you can whisper it, why not? But if the audio is of a character that yells, you're gonna go, Arr! and you're gonna say, you're gonna do something. Your energy level, your body behavior is gonna be totally different if you're actually yelling things out or speaking at the same level, at least, of your reference of the audio piece you wanna to animate too. So don't pretend. Speaking of audio, tip number four, listen to your audio, meaning know it. If you have the line playing in the background on loop or headphones, whatever you wanna use, and you have to kinda wait and, and wait for the lines, if you don't quite know what's going on, you're trying to remember when which word comes up or whatever it is, your reference is gonna be useless as well. You need to know the lines, you need to be able to just go through the acting choices so that you can feel the character and not really think about what the character is going to do. Feel, don't think. Tip number five, don't settle on your first take. You might go, all right, that was good. I'm the best actor ever. And then you're gonna notice that it's just gonna be the first basic cliche, stereotypical idea that everybody has. So I highly recommend that you act things out 10, 20, 30 times. If you have time to do as much and that's awesome. I'm just saying act it out a lot. So that way you get, again, all the crappy ideas out of your system, but you get to explore and be more organic and improvised and something where you're just not waiting for a moment. You're completely in character and you can just act it out in a way that's more natural and something that 
fits the character and fits the situation. It's gonna feel less rehearsed and it's gonna be much more natural. Tip number six, when you shoot reference, make sure that you shoot someone either that you know or you shoot yourself. But don't think of reference as in, mm, I saw this great actor in this great movie, I'm gonna take that reference and not actually shoot it and then trace that. Because A, it's not very original or it's not original at all and it's not gonna help you in selling yourself as an animator that comes up with original performances. And if you use a movie that people know and they're gonna look at your shot, they go, wait a minute, I know this movie, that's from this scene and it's this actor, why did you copy this? So all in all, when you shoot reference, this sounds like an obvious one, film yourself or film someone that can help you with the reference, but don't start using reference based on movies, based on other properties that are not original. Tip number seven, if you set up everything, your props, your sets, yourself, everything is there, but you can't really act it out the way you want it to be in terms of the style, you can start retiming the reference that you just shot. Mike Safianov, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm sorry if I butcher this, put up a progression reel that shows his acting choices, his progression, the blocking, the polish, but also how he takes the reference that he shot and tweaks it to retime it and to kind of make sure that the reference is closer to the style that he wants to animate at the end, which is great because that saves a ton of time, which is also a big thing about reference. If you ask, well, why would you shoot reference? Sometimes it's also just a big time saver. If you Google online for progression reels for animators, you're gonna get a lot of examples. So I highly recommend that you look at those, search for them, study them, look at how people act things out. Maybe they're more exaggerating their deliveries, maybe they're a bit more subtle. So you can kind of look at what's a good way that's gonna work for you. Ultimately, animation and the workflow and how you go about your, your shot and your progression as an animator, it's gonna be very specific to you. And there are progression reels that I post on my Spongella blog, so I'm gonna put the link to that in the description. And speaking of on animators, I have some more general tips, which is again, very specific to how you want to animate or how you want to shoot reference. But some people take more exaggerated reference. When they're acting things out, they're already thinking about silhouettes, they're thinking about the arcs and just exaggerated acting choices. And that way, in a way, again, it saves time. It's closer to the character. It's just their preferred process. But even if you do that, ultimately, your reference is not gonna work one-to-one -one because your character is probably going to look differently than you do, different scale, different proportions. It might even be something where you are acting something out as a human, but it's something that's going to be applied to an animal. It doesn't mean it has to be moving like an animal. It could be something where it's more like an animal that behaves like a human, but still, scale and proportions are going to be different. And you're still going to have to tweak the silhouette, the rhythm and the timing needs some more adjustment depending on the style you're going for. You're going to tweak the arcs. Again, it's not going to be exactly perfect what you shoot unless you're an awesome reference person, then you should hire out your talents. And as production might continue or as you might change some of the ideas, your camera might change. So ultimately, whatever you animate has to work towards the final camera. Now, going back to tip number two, you should set everything up, the camera angle, the frames per second, the lights and everything, but things are never really final. So there will be changes. There is a big chance that your camera will change. So ultimately, even if you have perfect reference, you still have to tweak things at the very end so that it fits your final vision, your final camera, whatever final product you wanna come up with. There are times when you can shoot reference and then you just copy it, you rotoscope it. There I say the R word, it just depends on the style. Sometimes people might ask for exactly that. They want exactly the reference and sometimes it's just fast because then you get whatever your ideas are onto your rig quickly and then you can start taking out poses or certain moments that didn't work. So it can be a completely valid tool in terms of workflow where you shoot reference quickly, put that on your rig quickly so you know, is this acting choice going to work with my rig, those proportions, this camera, the set, maybe a camera move, and then you can start taking things away and ultimately use maybe 20% of your reference. Because ultimately, just keep what you need and what you don't need, you delete. So you might have 20 minutes of reference time takes. So then just copy, copy, paste, paste, just do a master take of your 500 takes that you did. And that's the one you're going to use for your animation, which then at the end you might tweak again, but it's going to be a good building block that will help you start the shot, progress. And you can always shoot reference as you are in progression on the shot. So it doesn't mean that I shot it once and that's it. No, if you're done and mm, this moment doesn't quite work, I need to shoot more reference of a specific hand grab or head dart or eye dart or whatever you need. You can still reshoot reference and then reuse it. I'm going to post a 
ton of links in the description below. If you have other tips or other reference sites that might be useful, comment, let me know, let other people know what you like. There's something like Keyframe Pro that lets you use your reference footage that with Maya, it syncs up directly in Maya, which is great. So there are a ton of tools out there that can be apps when you shoot reference on your iPhone that lets you change the frames per second from 24 to 30 to 60, whatever you need. There's a ton of stuff out there. Again, let me know, let other people know in the comments. And as always, if you watched till the very end, thank you very much. And I'll see you next week.